Well, hello, friends. It's Pearl of Wisdom here, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, which I should change to our NHL Pearl of Wisdom because it's everybody's. Um, this is what I love about this channel and what we do here. I go and we talk in the comment section. I share the videos on Facebook. There are some incredibly knowledgeable people out there in the land. Um, it's not just, uh, not, and nothing against guys from The Athletic and all that. They're great, too. I got, Some of them are my friends. Uh, I even talked to uh, Jim Jackson, the voice of the Philadelphia Flyers. He's part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, which pays my bills. Uh, he, uh, he's the voice of the, of the Philadelphia Flyers. He does a play-by-play -play for NBC. He's part of that. Uh, go check it out. Steel Flyers All Sports Network on uh on uh, the web there it's fantastic but uh, even he says like we talk there's people we get paid to do this sort of thing and we take our time on it but a lot of it comes from just the regular fans that love their team and know the game and stuff like that so we go uh, I like to go out and learn from everybody and uh, we have I'm, I have somebody here that's mentioned something about the, the Sabres. I am doing a series right now about Jack Eichel if he was traded to every single team in the NHL. I'm going to continue that tomorrow, but first I thought it would be a good idea to just specifically talk about the Buffalo Sabres today. Um, by the way, if you have your time right now, if you can find it in your day, hit the subscribe button there. helps the channel out an awful lot. Uh, maybe hit a like if you like it all of that. Also, comment in the comment section. I almost always answer back. Uh, there's great conversation there. Go look at the previous videos I did. Uh, if you could, if you're feeling like it. Uh, we got uh, LA. We did LA. We did New Jersey. We did Detroit Red Wings. Um, New York Rangers. Uh, we did quite a few teams there. You can check it out and see what you have to say. But I wanted to get into just where the Buffalo Sabres are going to go. And before this trade were ever to happen, if it even happens, because I'm sure they're going to do whatever they can to keep Eichel and try to make him happy. Kind of what they tried to do with Hall, but mm, that didn't work out so well. <laughs> but the, I don't know. I don't know if he's at his wit's end or um, you got to remember at the, in the moment right now, Eichel was in a very difficult position of wondering what he's going to do with his injuries He's had a very frustrating year, and uh, he's had a very frustrating couple of years. So there's going to have to be a lot of fires being put out, put out there in Buffalo before they decide where to go from there. But we're going to look at that. What, where does Buffalo, where is Buffalo going to go from here? Which direction did they decide? Are they going to try to bring in players that can help now? Are they going to, what kind of, what positions do they need to fill with the trade like this if it were to come down or otherwise? Um, and all of that. So we're going to look at that starting here with Christian Anderson. He said, the Sabres will have huge holes to fill in their lineup. I agree. There, there is some pretty big holes. Although, I will say at the end of the year with Gr Granado there, and I, I hope they bring him back. I'm hearing they're not, but. Maybe he's not interested in being an NHL coach. I don't know. I thought he did a really good job with Buffalo. Um, with what he did, there was a. we'll look at it when we look at the Buffalo Sabres roster. I think there's less holes than I thought there were based on how they played in the second half. There's the goalie situation. Uh, who's going to be their number one? I think Allmark is their guy. I think they're still going to roll with Allmark. I think he wants to be there. He looked really good. Um, when he was injured, it really showed how good of a goaltender he really was. Now, I could see them going to get a better 1B than, say, Hutton, whose career seems to be over, but we'll look at that again. Uh, all the goalies are injured. Allmark won't be injured next year. Um, he'll, I'm sure he'll be fine and come back. But, yeah, if he has lingering injuries or if those injuries keep on going, now you've got another big hole to fill for sure. Um, however, um, we'll look at their backup goaltender. I can't remember his name now off the top of my head, but he will looked really good down the stretch too. So there's that goaltending may not be their biggest problem. Uh, Reno Eichel, 
uh, and Risto wants out as of now. Okay, Risto has said he wanted out for a long time. That's a guy that maybe will have to leave now. I mean, this is like the third time he has said, basically, I want out. So um, as far as Reinhardt is concerned, he could have an opportunity to be a number one center here in Buffalo. After talking to his agent and really looking at it, I don't know if it would be the best thing for his career to go somewhere else, but it could be. Um, Trade rumors seem to be that no team willing to offer their top prospect or player for Eichel. Hence the reason why I did this, because I was getting a lot of trade offers, uh, getting a lot of letters from people saying um, that I would give up this, that, or the other thing for Eichel. Um, and they were pretty poor. I, I think Eichel has been very undervalued in uh, because of the situation that's been going on in Buffalo. He says, if so, there's zero chance that Eichel gets traded. I agree. If Kings want Eichel, they would have to give up Byfield, three additional pieces equal to a first-round pick. I Maybe, that may be a little steep. I don't know. The bidding war is concerned. But as but the depending on what the bidding war is, that may seem a little steep to me. Uh, that would mean like Turcotte, Byfield, two first, something like that. I don't think they're going to have to give up two A prospects, but they will have to give up one and several other things, I imagine, uh, which we're looking at as we do these Eichel traded to everybody. We're going to get a feel for how much a team is likely going to give up. If so, there's zero. Ch okay. Uh, Rangers would have to give up Laffy, same as above. Again, I, I don't know if they have to give up four top-rated prospects. Um, let me read that again. Laffey and then like three firsts? Not really sure about that. Minnesota would have to send Kaprizov. I don't think Minnesota's going to put Kaprizov in that deal. Kaprizov would, might make that deal for sure. No doubt about that. But it seems... A little lateral. I still say Eichel's a better player than Kaprizov, and I know a lot of people out there are going to freak when they say that. Absolutely. But maybe a little more. I think Minnesota would work out a deal that didn't include Kaprizov in that deal, but I get what you're saying. Ottawa would have to send Stutzla plus more. I already mentioned that. The Ottawa Senators fans went nuts. <laughs> didn't like that at all. Over on Facebook, I post these over on Facebook to see the reactions. And of course, when it's your own team, we value players. We have a heart for these players, right? So they seem to have greater value than uh, maybe we think. Uh, I don't think Stutzla is ever going to be Eichel level. Um, there's a whole lot of question about whether um, Eichel has been a cancer in the room. I don't hear that anywhere. I think he's just been in a very difficult situation. Tell me what you think about that. Um, many fans of other teams seem to think that Sabres have no leverage and will have to trade Eichel for a decent roster player, first-round pick, and a prospect. That's just, I agree, that won't happen. That simply won't happen. It's uh, They'll keep him. They have leverage. He doesn't have... He, he doesn't really have a no-movement clause. He would have to sit, and even at that he'd have to sit for a very long time because that's just ruining your organization if you take something back like that. Uh, Sabres waited for a, a player for Eichel's caliber and they tanked all the crap to get him. Let's not forget. Uh, which I think was part of the reason why there's a Sabres philosophy problem there. That tank really ruins the culture in a room and the way people think of your organization and pride and all of these important things. Uh, although Pittsburgh got away with it, but it took them a while to bail themselves out. Uh, for a very long time, they won't have him away for Strom, Kratzoff, Gorgiev, and a first rounder. I agree, that's not enough. Uh, that isn't close to enough to offer for a player of Eichel's caliber. Eichel is the face of the Sabres franchise. There will be like 10 teams at least who will be making trade offers, even if they're injury concerns. And for Eichel caliber, rarely get players of Eichel's caliber rarely get traded. Totally agree with that. Um, 
Now, I, I do a show from 3 to 5 Eastern called the um, Perlow's NHL uh, live stream. Uh, go check it out. Uh, it's 3 to 5 Eastern on this channel, five days a week. And I have a fellow there that comes on with me. His name is Peyton on the radio. He's a great analytics guy, um, follows analytics like crazy. Eichel's analytics are absolutely insane. He is one of the best defensive forwards in the league, and his offensive performance analytically is amazing. The fact that he's only putting up the points that he has, which are actually not too shabby, is more of a testament to the team that he has than the actual analytics would suggest. The analytics would suggest, and for as far as I'm concerned, I test would suggest, if he was playing it on an average team, I think he would get right around about 120 points now. So, and be one of the best defensive players in the league. Okay, so let's look at Buffalo Sabres real quick here and see what they, uh, some of the things, some of the challenges that they might have. Let's make sure we're in the center here. Okay. Okay, here we go. So, holes to fill. We'll try to do this really quick. Um, in the second half, after they got rid of Granado, Casey Middlestat actually looked really good. Um, not, or very, he looked good. I shouldn't say really good. He looked good. And he hadn't looked good in a very long time. Looked like he was building confidence. I think they're going to give him a good chance next year. You can give him a good uh, – I can't really staple to him to the spot of second-line center, but he's probably going to play there. Uh, again, he talked about Sam Reinhart talking about his uh, – he's not happy right now, whatever the case may be. I, first of all, they have him on the wing. If we're going to trade Jack Eichel and we can make Sam Reinhart happy, we possibly don't need a – center as much as we think which would be huge for that trade as we do these if you see you'll see that if we can go with wingers for a center you can get some really awesome wingers so sam reinhardt put up awesome points in the second half i don't have it here exactly how many it was but he took off and ended up getting 25 and 54 which is a 40 goal pace as a center that's pretty huge that's first line center stuff we got to give him a shot there at the center spot, I think. Um, Jack Eichel, again, would likely not be traded until after the surgery or not surgery. They haven't figured out what they're going to do with his neck. All I do know is that there are many players that have had the same issue that end up uh, being just fine. Almost all of them end up being just fine, and they didn't have surgery. What it seems Jack Eichel is saying is that there's a new surgery that'll quicken the process and he would like to do it. Something of that nature. I don't know all of it, but from what I'm hearing, from what I'm reading from all the other sites like The Athletic, that seems to be the case. So it's not much to worry about, but the trade likely won't happen till next year. Put Sam Reinhardt up in the middle, then holes to fill. Okay. Tage Thompson also played really well in the second half. Most of, the, most of his points came in the second half. I thought he looked like he was going to possibly be what they expected, what St. Louis expected him to be um, when they drafted him in the late first a little while ago, a couple of years ago. Um, and uh, so that would solve a lot of problems. If Jeff Skinner, Jeff Skinner looked better, but still not good. If he could please find anywhere near like a $5 million player for his $9 million contract. You can put him up here on the left wing. Dylan Cousins, they have him as a center. I think he, I think personally he looks better as a winger. You can put him up here on the left side, but he is fairly green at 20 years old. So he's still got a very green team. Um, then, you know, you got our two roots aligning, looked excellent, got six points in 17 games in the second half. Things are a little, a lot greener after Granado took over and built some confidence in this team than it was beforehand. Now, what's Buffalo going to do? Buffalo can do two things with Jack Eichel. I would say, of course, you would know that too. They either go and get prospects and completely rebuild this team. It's possible they go that direction. They either that or they trade for 
some players now try to keep this second half ball rolling and come close to playoff contention and uh, possibly get a really good some really good prospects to go with it. I think that's where they could they're likely going to lean here. Something of that nature. It's going to be a uh, uh, for now and for later type trade. Why do I say that? Because Buffalo Sabres fans have been hurt and so bad. This guy, these are their clients. It is horrible in Buffalo right now, and for good reason. This team has been poopy for a very long time. On the defense, Matthias Samuelson came out and played really well. Um, I'm not sure you want him to be playing those kind of minutes for a whole season. Uh, Rasmus Ristolainen, I think, like I said, he's probably going to have to be traded. Um, in which case, you might want to look at a defenseman to fill as well. You've got free agency. You can bring some free agents in to fill out the defense. Rasmus Dahlin, again, looked a lot better in the second half. What I think I'm saying here is either keep Granado, get a new coach. You saw a glimmer of what this team can be. You don't. We're not going to be trading Eichel until sometime next year. Add some free agents. See what we have and hope to heck you can say if Eichel has to be traded. If Eichel said, I'm done with this organization, I want out of here, um, hopefully you can add players for now and have this team be not too bad. I agree with the uh, with Christian as well. Once Eichel is, is finished, is healthy again and ready to go, most general managers see Eichel as a franchise player. Uh, they don't come around very often. It's a rare thing. All of the things that happened in the past, I think most general managers will chalk up to an organization that has been floundering, and uh, this kid just needs a new place, and when they have it, you'll get the Eichel of old. If you do, we're talking about a guy that you have that, that can bring you cups, and that's what it's all about. And yes, I think they're going to give big. Um, I th and if you look at my uh, videos, and I've been slammed quite a bit by many of the teams that I did the videos for, for, for what the offers have been. But I really do think those kind of offers are going to be there. Um, a one, uh, a top-level prospect, another guy, Gabriel, I think his name was, came on and said and brought in some really good information from some great writers from the Athletic that said a top level prospect, uh, which is an A prospect, a B or two prospects, draft picks, uh, you know, stuff like that if you're going to go the prospect route. Otherwise, I'm going to be doing the Philadelphia Flyers tomorrow. There's an interesting scenario there where you can get actual players that can play right now. Um, uh, possibly the Arizona Coyote. Again, they're, they've been a lot of talk about them. I'm going to do them. Um, and uh, probably the Calgary Flames, who have some now prospects. So I'm going to do, not now prospects, but now players. At the very least, I'm sure they're going to be looking for young players that can play right now. This is not a team that can burn it all down. They're going to have to do some uh, putting out of fires with Reinhardt and guys like that, building them up, saying, look, we're good. we've got a great direction going here. I know they've probably heard it several times before. But somehow you got to spin it that this is going to be okay. And if they can, I think Buffalo could end up being not too bad in the long run. Anyways, I thought we'd look at that. Tell me what you think in the comment section of what I said here. Does Buffalo decide to just burn it all down? Do you think they should burn it all down? Do you think that they should get some players and try to build around those players? Maybe, you know, they haven't been doing very well with free agency, but they could venture out into free agents. We'll talk also maybe about what free agents they could be looking at if they go either direction. We'll be talking about a lot of stuff because this never ends. Thank you for your subscriptions. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for your comments. I'll get back to you tomorrow. I am back to the trade de uh, trading cycle to every team tomorrow, but I wanted to do this one today. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you. Okay, bye.